Hi and welcome to your next lecture in computer science for everyone. In this section we're going to start with uh, actual Java programming. So let's get to it. First of all, let's see what computers were like in the very beginning. The very first electronic digital computers, like the ones we have today, came after World War II. Um, and the first ones worked with this thing that you see at the right, which is a punch hole card. It's essentially binary code, but um, instead of writing it with a keyboard, like we've done so far, it is dug into a card like you see there. Um, it, it is really complicated to do, and because the computers wouldn't store the programs in them, you'd have to always have a stack of cards with you whenever you wanted to run one of the programs. But let's forget about that, and today we're with the von Neumann architecture. Von Neumann was a mathematician that he came up with this architecture for computers that he thought would be the best. And so far we're still using it. Um, so this architecture has a control unit, which we've seen in the processor lecture um, previously. It has an arithmetic logic unit, which was also seen. However, in modern computers this is called the instruction unit, and has the arithmetic logic unit the floating point unit and registries. Registries were also present uh, in the von Neumann architecture, but they were called memory. Um, and this memory is depicted in this um, diagram as part of the CPU, but actually it is the RAM, the registries, and the caches of the processor together. So this is only a very simple schematic of what the processor would look like. And then you also have input and output, as you can see there. A very brief history of programming languages. The first programming language we had as we saw in the punch hole card, is the binary code, which is called machine language or object code, any of those names. After that, we came up with assembly. Assembly was simply, um, uh, it's described as a mnemonic for programming in binary code. So you might call add um, a bunch of binary codes that perform the function of adding. However, add doesn't translate into anything else than adding something. Um, You'll understand what I mean later on when we start programming in Java in a couple lectures' time. So assembly um, was that programming language. We will not be studying assembly in this course, although you can see um, at the right of this video, in the um, download section, you can see a sample program in assembly that has comments, and so you'll be able to kind of understand what it does uh, to a certain extent, and it should be fairly simple. And finally, after assembly, in 1954, we came up with Fortran, which was Formula Translating System. Um, and this was invented so that we could perform those complex calculations that computers were necessary for, but which assembly and binary code made really difficult because of how they were programmed. Fortran made it easy for you to write 5 divided by 3, and that would give you the value 5 divided by 3, whereas in assembly and binary code, you'd have to do that manually with subtraction or addition which wasn't very convenient. So that was Fortran in 1954. And after that, we started getting a lot more languages. We started getting C, we started getting small talk and stuff like that. And today, programming languages are more high level. We've seen what high level means, which means they're a lot more abstract than binary assembly and Fortran. But they're also a lot more complex. We will not be, although I'd be able to teach you the basics of assembly in probably one lecture, I not going into very much detail, obviously. I will not be able to teach the basics of Java, which is the language we're going to be learning, in one lecture. It will take a few more. So Java is a bit more complex. Um, and certainly programming languages now are more complex, just like Java. And the output of modern programming languages takes longer to run. However, this is not a problem, because computers are a lot faster than back in the days. Um, back in the days, um, a computer could have... 20 megahertz of processor, and now it has 3.4 gigahertz. So it is a lot faster nowadays. And also, this um, evolution of programming languages has happened because computers can be working 24 hours per day, and that's not a big deal. However, programmers can be working 24 hours per day. So programmer time is more valuable than computer time, and therefore, we need to come up with programming languages that are more high level, kind of more complex, but also easier to understand and work with, 
so that less time is wasted trying to correct mistakes that one might not notice because of the complexity of the language. So this is pretty much everything in the brief history of programming languages. Um, now let's move on to the next lecture. So I'll see you in the next one.